Did I mention that this faux leather feels pretty nice? Hey, how's it going? This is Joe Intel. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the OSD Black Travoce 12 subwoofer. All right, so OSD Black, these guys sent me this to review. If you don't know about OSD, they've been making outdoor speakers for a while, and now they're venturing into the home theater space with their OSD Black series. And so I've been testing this out for the past month or so, and I have an idea what this is about, and I wanna tell you guys about it. One thing I do wanna say is they do have a special going on on these. Not sure how long it's gonna last, but I will tell you more about that, but there's a crazy deal that they're doing on this. So the first thing that you'll notice here is that this is not a very big subwoofer. So looking at it, this is about a 13 inch cube, and you'll see here the 12 inch subwoofer with a nice beefy surround. So this is rubber here, and this is a paper, treated paper, Woofer. I do like treated paper for subwoofers because I feel like they are still rigid, but they are lighter and so they have less inertia, they start and stop faster, and what some people would call more musical. But um, yeah, they, to me they have a more organic sound, so this does have that kind of quality to it. Now right off the bat I'm going to say that these are not the perfect subwoofer. There are some things that I didn't like about it and a lot of things that I did like about it. So one of the things that I really like is here's the front. When I turn it to the side, you'll see this. And this is not another driver. This is a passive radiator. And this is a carbon fiber composite with the same beefy surround. This is 12 inches. And so what is this? What is this for? Well, before I show you and tell you, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to the other side. What is that? Another one, so yes, because it's not ported, these passive radiators act as the port. And so typically you want double the surface area as your main driver. So 12 inch driver here, and you have two 12 inch passive radiators on the side. And the benefit to that is that this acts, it has the qualities of the ported subwoofer in that it helps with the low frequency extension, but it has the qualities of a sealed subwoofer in that you don't have to worry about port chuffing. There's no, no port chuffing here. You don't have to worry about that. On the back, turn that around. Boom, you'll see high level inputs. And this is found on some of the higher end systems because some people do want to incorporate the sound of their amplifier. Some people do believe that it has a sound and I would agree with them. And they want to incorporate that with their subwoofer. It does have the typical connections that you would expect to see in a subwoofer mainly the low frequency input, RCAs, and then you have your volume control frequency selector. That'll take you from 40 hertz all the way to 200 hertz. If you're planning on using this with an AVR, you're gonna allow that to do its thing. So you're gonna put this at 200 hertz and let the AVR do what it's gonna do with the room correction. Now over here, you'll also find the phase switch from zero to 180 degrees. And then you have your off, on and in between, which is where I keep it, you have the power switch. This will automatically sense whether there's a signal and turn it on and off automatically. You have your power, power switch on and off, and then you have your switch from 110 to 220 volts. I also wanna make note of a few things here. So when you look at the front, this does have a grill here. This is wooden. It's not magnetic, which is good. I don't like magnetic ones for subwoofers because they can easily get blown off with the power of the subwoofer. So these do have pegs and it just fits nicely. That's how it looks right there. And so quickly, I wanted to take a look at the bottom of this thing. It does have some rubber feet on the bottom to help decouple it because you don't want it to rattle things unnecessarily. All right, so I've said it before that when I'm looking for a subwoofer, I want something that's gonna get down to 20 hertz. To me, that's the magic number. I think every subwoofer should go down to 20 hertz because your speakers can't typically play down to 20 hertz. That's the main job of the subwoofer to take over those frequencies. And so I'm gonna show you the measurements that I got from the subwoofer and tell you some of the issues that I had with it. All right, so right here I'm looking at the Travoce 12. And as you can tell, there's a very big peak right here around 60 hertz. So what I'm looking for is, I would prefer this to be very flat across here because that makes it easier to blend with your other speakers. 
So here I tested to see what the max I could get out of this. This was from one foot away, so that's not standard, but just to give you an idea, this is able to hit about 130 decibels right here around 57 Hertz. I can tell you that that's true because it was really shaking a lot of stuff in here and it was, it was pretty nuts. But the problem is how fast it drops off here. So that's not that usable to me. I'm not trying to win any SPL competitions. I want to use this for music and movies. So just for fun, I applied some EQ filters. And so this is what it came up with here. And you notice that uh, compared to, let's take this away, compared to the original one, it really shifted the low frequency extension. And so it goes way further out. Now, what does this mean is it means that you're not able to get some of those high SPLs. So let's compare those. So this is original and this is with some EQ. And as you can tell, you're not, you know, this is down a significant amount from 130 down to what is this? You know, 10 decibels down, let's say. But what you do get in addition is you get this low frequency extension. So what kind of extension are we looking at? Let me take some of this away to make it easier to look at. Let's look at this one just to make it easy. What do we get is we're getting, let's just say we were able to cut this off here. So I'll take off this peak here. Um, Odyssey would do that most likely. And so let's just say 96 decibels here, right? So minus three dB from 96 would be 93 points. Eh, right here around 20, 22 Hertz is the minus three dB point. So that's pretty good. The minus 6 dB point is still very usable. And so a lot of manufacturers do based on that. So around here, we're down to 20 Hertz. So that is usable. You corner load this thing and you will get some usable 20 Hertz frequencies at some decent levels too. So if I were to look at this one, where is it? this one here. So I would lob this part off here, cut that straight off, boom. So let's say around 109 decibels and we're at 25 Hertz at 22 Hertz. We're at, we're at 106.8 decibels and at 20 Hertz, we're down here around 103 decibels. So usable in my opinion. So as you can see there that this does not go down to 20 Hertz, but with the help of DSP, you would be able to do that because if you notice, this does have high SPL capabilities. It's kind of like they chose high SPL over low frequency extension. That was a choice that they made. And it's kind of like an engine that's very powerful. So this is capable, has enough power, and they claim 800 watts, I should mention that, 800 watts dynamic. And so I'm not sure if that means um, RMS or peak, but I hope they clarify. Maybe I miss it somewhere, leave a comment if I've missed that. But I was gonna say that this is like a very capable motor, right? And so if you're into cars, you'll know that strong motor, you can gear it a few ways. You can go for top speed, which is high SPL, or you could have it geared for, you know, maximum acceleration in a quarter mile, which would be equivalent to, let's say, a low frequency extension on this. And so you have to choose one or the other. You can't really have both, right? And so me, I would, I would choose low frequency extension because I don't need it to play super loud. I'm not in a huge space. If you do, you can make that choice for yourself. So they do have very inexpensive DSP units. They have one from Mini DSP and they have another one that I saw from Dayton Audio This just for subwoofers and it's under hundred bucks. So with the Dayton one, I noticed that they do have an app that you can use. You don't even have to have a calibrated mic. You can just plug that in, use your phone to calibrate the subwoofer. And with that, you'd be able to get this down to 20 Hertz. I know because I tried. And so you do sacrifice some SPL. In my case, it was more than loud enough in my listening environment. So that's what you sacrifice with these over some of the other ones that already do use DSP to tune their subwoofer to be able to play notes that it shouldn't be able to play without DSP. So thanks to the computer, these are getting more and more capable. Hopefully in the next iteration, they'll do something like that. So OSD, if you're listening, that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see something like this with some DSP built in. That'd be awesome. So overall, what I would like to say is OSD did make a special offer. Use the coupon code JoeAntel and I'm not gonna say the exact price right now. You're gonna have to click on the link in the description, but check it out. And they go from a very reasonable price, right? Something that I would easily recommend to something extremely reasonable 
where you might want to buy two of these because they always say two subs are better than one and I believe that's true. Maybe for the price of one subwoofer you'd be able to get two of these and get some of those mini DSPs or get those Dayton DSP units and tune this for your system. Then after it's tuned, you get it down to 20 Hertz, then use your AVR Odyssey or whatever your system uses to really tune it and level match these to the rest of your speakers. I think that's gonna make for a great system. Now, how great of a system? We're gonna have to put it on the speaker leaderboard to find out, subwoofer leaderboard, is that what we wanna call it? And we'll see how this compares to some of the other subwoofers on the market. All right, so I'm gonna quickly add the OSD Travocia 12 to the subwoofer list here. So on the top, we have the SB3000, which is the most recent one that I've reviewed. This goes down below 20 Hertz. The SB2000 also, I believe, goes down to 19 Hertz. The Build that I did, uh, DIY build, this got down to 25 hertz with an eight inch subwoofer, but that's with DSP. The Sonos also gets down to around 20 hertz using DSP. The Elac Sub 3010 does also use DSP, and these here do not. So I'm gonna have to put the Travoce 12, let's see here, I would say right here above the Elac Sub 3010 because it got down to about the same frequencies that the 3010 was able to, but the 3010 did have DSP, and it still wasn't able to get down to 20 hertz. This was a 10 inch subwoofer, this is a 12, and so you kind of expect that. But with DSP, I believe that this would outperform this ELAC. So there you have it. Okay, so there you have it. You can see that as is, without any DSP, there were some other subwoofers that I would recommend because they already have the DSP built in. Now, if you add DSP, might be a different story. So I'm glad to see another company in this space there are a few companies that make subwoofers. I'm glad to see a brand new one. They're promising to provide a lot of value. I think they're proving that they are providing a lot of value for the dollar with some of these products they're coming out with. So if you have any questions about the OSD, Travoce 12, or any other products, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for allowing me to do what I love to do here on YouTube, as well as the Hi-Fi Summit. Thank you guys, that was awesome. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, patreon.com forward slash Joe Intel. So that's it. Take care, bye-bye.